swagger back. Jesus gave me swagger back. Now that I got my swagger back, I mean I'm in my new image. Real with the Holy Spirit, feeling like I enter new dimensions. Now that I'm in Him, I experience this new living. Flipping pages back and forth. From King James to new living is true giving. I gave this all up, so this is true giving. Don't try to judge me by what I give. What are you giving? I got joy that's overflowing, plus I ain't through living. I got more power, more power, more power than two Hemis. When you see my crew, and we be shouting loud, do that. Step up in the church and people looking like, who that? Hear a kingdom word and you Care. Acts chapter 19, look at verse 1. Turn quickly. Shout whoop, there it is if you got it. Whoop, Shout whoop, there it is if you got it. Whoop, there it is. Amen. Is there life in this house? Yes. Amen. Is Jesus alive? Yes. Is he risen? Yes. Has he sent the Holy Ghost? Yes. Is his word true? Yes. Is his blood potent? Yes. Then are you alive? Yes. Do you have his word? Yes. Is he risen in you? Yes. Do you have the Holy Ghost? Has his blood cleansed you? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good all by itself. Amen. 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 Acts chapter 19. Look at verse 1. Look what it says. And it came to pass that while Apollos were at Corinth, Paul passed through the upper coast and came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? I want you to underline two words in your Bible. And that's King James I'm reading. I want you to underline received and believed. Underline the phrase, have you received? And then underline the phrase, since you believed. Let's read it again. And he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And he said unto him, and they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And I want you to underline in this scripture, we have not so much as heard. And you can circle Holy Ghost in that, that part of the first part that I told you on the line. Have you received the Holy Ghost? You can just circle that. Let's read it together. Let's read it together. Read it. Verse, verse 2. And it reads. Yes. Put emphasis on the underlying words. Let's start over. And it reads. He said unto them, Have you Watch what happened. Watch what happened, Mama Bell. This is what happened. Paul is walking and he run up into some people that are in church and he asked them one of the most important questions they can ever they can ever hear. He asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And look what they say. They said, we haven't even heard about no Holy Ghost. Then what are you preaching? Right. Oh. Who's empowering you to live? Who's feeding you teachings? Yeah. Yeah. Who's revealing knowledge to you? You haven't even heard about the most important person on earth. The one that connects you to the king. The one that feeds you the truth of the kingdom. The one that empowers you to do the work of the kingdom. The one that God, Jesus said himself, is better for you that I leave so he can come. And you haven't even heard about him. So Paul's question, watch this. Just, the under, just read the underlying statements to me. Just the underlying statements. Read it to me and it reads. Have you received? Stop right there. Look what he asked him. Have you received? Do you have? Have you received? Read it together. Read the, I ain't going to stop you. Go ahead. The whole underlying statement. Start at the beginning. And it reads. Have you received? Hold up. That means this. Look how he's asking the question. He walks up and says, have you received since you believe? Since you became a believer, have you received the thing God promised to you? Yeah. Amen. Amen. You a believer? You believe? Yeah. Have you received? <laughs> Do you have? God promised some stuff to you. Jesus, Paul walks up to him and says, you know, God promised some stuff to you. Do you got it yet? Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Come on. <laughs> and look what they said. Their response was, read it, read it, read it. Read the underline again. Just start at the beginning and it read. Yeah. From the beginning and it reads. Have you received? And their response was, Watch how this works. Paul showed up and Paul said, Paul said, Paul walked up and said, All right, you're a believer. God promised some stuff to you. Do you have it? And they said, Hold on, we ain't even heard about it. 
Paul said, have you received since you believe? Because believing is supposed to bring receiving. Have you received what you believe? And then they say, hold on, we haven't even heard. <laughs> because it's impossible to receive something or to believe something you haven't heard. Yeah. You will never receive what you don't believe. Right. And you will never believe what you don't know. Yeah. Right. Amen. So God promised something. Turn to Hebrews. Hebrews, Hebrews. I don't even know where I'm going in Hebrews. Hebrews 6. Hebrews 6. Not a part of the message. Turn there. Hebrews 6. <clears throat> Hebrews 6. Have you received since you believe? And they say, we have not heard. And here's the problem. I can't, be I can't receive without believing, but I can't believe without hearing. Faith cometh by and hearing by until I know I won't be able to believe and until I believe I won't be able to receive so Paul fixed the hearing part Amen. they have to do the believing part Amen. then they can do the receiving part read the rest of the story you got all that so here's my thing God has promised some things to the body of Christ and the body of Christ uh, 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 the body of Christ as a whole we're talking about needs to get in the position to receive what he has promised but first we got to hear what he's promised because we can't believe without hearing, and we can't hear. We can't, we can't receive without believing. We can't believe without hearing. Hebrews chapter 6, you got now, it? Now, in this scripture, he was talking about this, and we, we talked about it yesterday in prayer. It's starting at verse 4. Uh, we ain't got to read verse 4, but it's starting at verse 4. That's what he was talking about, Will. He says, all right, here's some things that are going on. He's, matter of fact, start at verse 1. Start at verse 1. <clears throat> Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ... Somebody say, tell us to leave some stuff. Leave Let's look at what he tells us to leave, Perry. Let us go on to, not that the stuff ain't important, but we ought to progress. Let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. Not telling people they need to repent all the time. He said, you ought to progress past that. Hmm. It's in the Bible. You need to have faith in God. He said, leave that too. Progress. Not that the faith in God is not important. He's talking about the teaching to the church. Not to the world. Come on, come on. This written to the church. He's telling the church, hold up. You're supposed to have the faith in God thing down pat. Yeah. Yeah. We ain't supposed to stay right here. You're supposed to have that down pat and we can progress to other stuff. Let's keep reading. Look what he says. Of the doctrine of baptisms. There's an S on that. Water baptism, baptism of the Holy. You suppose the, the, the body of Christ, he's telling the people, the Hebrew people, you're supposed to know this. This is supposed to be, he considers this information. Oh, let's keep reading. Of the laying on of hands, the resurrection from the dead, and the eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permit. Do you know what Paul is saying? Or whoever wrote Hebrews? The writer is unknown. Whoever wrote Hebrews is saying this here. This stuff is good. But it's supposed to be the foundation elementary things. Not the mature things. And it's the only thing that we've been preaching. So Paul said, then Paul come right after that. Let me move on to another subject then. Because y'all looking at me like, Bishop, I can't leave that. God told you. I ain't tell you. You're supposed to have it. Leave with it. Grab it. Keep it with you. Don't forget it. Grab it. Keep it with you. Move on. Amen. I got faith towards God. Then I already know it. I already know Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I believe that. I receive that. I preach that to the world that don't know it. Yeah. I don't show it to a bunch of people that do know it and then preach Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and you know it. Does that make sense, Miss Cheryl? For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift that were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Watch this here. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away and renew again unto repentance and seeing crucified themselves, the, the son of God afresh and put him to open shame. Look what it's saying. This is what it's saying right here. It's saying this here. Whoever got filled with the Holy Ghost and they got they tasted the heavenly gift of the Holy Spirit. You've been filled with the Holy Ghost and all of a sudden you decided that you didn't want the Holy Ghost no more. You don't want to be a part of this thing of God no more. You don't want to have faith in Jesus Christ. So you just say, all right, I'll tell you what. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. I've been a part of God, but I don't believe in God now. It's not just talking about backsliding. 
It's talking about you've been filled with the Holy Ghost and now you're going to openly deny God. And then he said, there's no way for you to come back. Why? Because you've blasphemed the Holy Ghost. So many words. Verse 8. But that which beareth thorns and bribes is rejected. And let's read it out of the New Living. You got the New Living, say amen. amen. Verse 7. Look what it said. When the ground soak up the falling rain and bears the crop for the farmer, it has blessing. But if the, the field bears thorns and thistle, it is useless. The farmer would soon condemn the field and burn it. Verse 9. You got the New Living, say amen real loud. Amen. Read it with me and it reads. Dear friends, even though we are talking this way, we really don't believe it applies to you. So he's saying, look, I believe, I believe you sincere with God. I believe you really love Jesus Christ. I believe you really believe Jesus rose from the dead. I believe you're filled with the Holy Ghost, and I believe your passion for God is real. I believe that you want to live out this thing. I believe that you want to fulfill the kingdom mandate. I believe that you want to live eternity with God. I believe that you have God's nature. I believe this don't apply to you, but I had to share it anyway, just in case. And then he says this here after... I don't believe it applies to you. Read it real loud and read. Stop right there. Stop right there. What? You mean there are some things that are going on and God said you're meant for better things. Read the next part. In the King James it said accompany salvation. So now you've just been satisfied with being saved and God said no I got stuff that come with it. Have you received since you believed? Have you received what? The stuff that come with it? We have not so much as even heard of the things that come with salvation. We didn't know things come with salvation. Well, the scripture said things come with it. You say that's great, powerful, awesome, wonderful, most remarkable, cre I mean, the most, most remarkable miracle that has ever existed is the salvation of man. The recreation of man is the most remarkable thing. I, I, lo I love it. I, I, I give God praise for it every day. Thank you, God, for making me new. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming to live in me. Thank you, God. I give God praise every day for that. And then he said, but there's some stuff that come with it. Have you believed since you have you received since you believe and said, God, we have we just like the other people. We have not even heard. We don't even know we got other stuff. Let's look at another. Matthew chapter 9. Turn quick, 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 quick. Quick, quick, quick. <clears throat> Give me around 35, 40 more minutes of your time. We're going we gonna, to we gonna, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna teach this. Well, I don't know how long. Amen. Matthew chapter 9. I wanted to go, you know what, I wanted, I wanted to go to Ephesians 4. I wanted to go to Ephesians 4, verse 11 through 14. I really wanted to go there, Brian, to show you the purpose of the gifts of the, to the body. The fivefold gifts that we call fivefold ministry gifts. We, the, the gifts of the body, and one of them is the pastor, the, 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 let me see, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. That's how I do them on my hand because the apostle is one that can touch every other gift. He can touch every, the, the, the prophet is one that points the way, points the way. That's how I learned these gifts. The, the, the evangelist is the longest finger on the hand because he reached out and he pulled people in. And then the pastor is the ring finger. Uh, he, he, he's the one that has the heart for the people. And the teacher, he's the smaller, but he, he's the balance of the whole hand. So I, I learned the five-fold ministry gifts like that. The, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. That's why I had to go through that. And then he said, here's the gift, that they may bring you to the place of, of, of maturity, to raise you to the full stature of the Son of God, to a place of perfecting the saints, the edifying of the body, to bring you up. Somebody say, that's what my pastor for. Thank you, all five of you. Now, somebody say, that's what my pastor for. The purpose of... See, see, it, it'll be important. It'll be important. Why does the Holy Spirit have me over here, Perry? Okay. It'll be important that you give place to the Holy Ghost to teach you. Although he may teach you through your pastor, it's still the Holy Ghost teaching you. And as the Holy Ghost gives place, it, it, it'll be important for you because it is the purpose of the pastor. Amen. There are things that accompany salvation that God, it is a dis, dis, dishonor to God for God to pay for something and you don't want it. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 It's a dishonor. You want to honor Jesus, take advantage of what he paid for. You want to honor Jesus, live like it. He paid for you to live right. You want to honor Jesus, grab the health. He paid for you to have it. You want to honor Jesus, then receive the provision. He paid for you to have it. You want to honor Jesus, then receive the salvation. He paid for you to have it. You want to honor him, take advantage of what he paid for. Yeah, you want to dishonor him? Come on. 
walk away from what he paid for. Amen. So the pastor raises. That's what you'll do when, when, when you have your fellowship. You'll raise the people to the place Amen. of enjoying that fellowship with God. Raising them. Now, you can't raise people that think they ought to pastor you. The people that want to submit to it, you'll raise. You'll raise. You'll raise. And the, then when you raise them to a place of understanding, it is then that they begin to walk out the things that they, I can receive now because I believe, but I can believe because now I have heard. Let's get to you too, Errol. Well, I told y'all to turn to. Am I there? Yeah, I am there. Look at that one swipe, and I got over there. Chapter 9. You got it? You got it? I need you to move fast. Let's move fast. I need to move fast too. Matthew chapter 9. We're going to chapter 8. 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. Starting at verse 1. Starting at verse 1. Starting at verse 1. Somebody say, I need to know before I can believe. <clears throat> Amen. Hallelujah. The key to receiving is believing. That's all it is. Perry preached about that Thursday. You want to know the key to the door? Just believe. Amen. Jesus is the door. What's the key to it? Believe. Is that simple? Believe. Believe. No assistance of the senses. No assistance of what you see, taste, touch, smell, or hear. He Jesus said faith. that before God ever, I need to know that before God ever showed up, he was still there. Yeah. Before he ever manifested, he was still there. In other words, he's talking about a belief that goes beyond sight, feeling, taste, touching, or smelling. He's talking about a knowing. Confidence comes from you knowing. Yeah. There's no room for guessing with God. No room for guessing and wishing. And, and, and I think this will work and I hope this will work. No, it'll get you nothing with God. God is not the tooth fairy. You can't hope for him to show up. You got to know he's there. If you want him to matter, you just got to know this. Amen. 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 And watch this. Look what he says. What happens when you don't know? You're, you're, you're insecure. Yeah. You lack confidence. You, you don't have boldness. Yeah. You don't have boldness. When you don't know, you don't have boldness. Look what it says. And when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leopard and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if it's your will, you can make me clean. How many of us can pray prayers like that? Don't know his will, so we throw an if it's your will prayer up to him. No, go learn the will before you even pray. I remember when I taught in um, the, the, the proper procedure of prayer that I said this year. This is what I said, Will. The most important thing when you're in a situation and you need deliverance out of a situation or you need some, 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 some heavenly assistance or you need heaven to agree with you and fix the situation, the most important thing is not for you to pray. That's not the most important thing. The most important thing is to find out what the king has to say about it. First, find out what Jesus said about it and then pray the thing he said about it. At least you go and pray and your whole prayer be ignorant. Because praying don't move God. Intelligent prayer moves God. Prayer that is in line with his word moves God. Just throwing stuff at God don't move God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said if you... He said, Lord, if it's your will, you can make me clean. And look at verse 3. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. He said, I will be clean. Now look what, the man, look what Jesus had to do in order for the man to receive. Jesus had to clear up his misconception about his will. He came up to him and he said, Jesus, if it's your will, Jesus said, there's nothing I can do with the if part. So I had to make it clear that it is my will. I will. It is my will. And then the next part of the scripture said, and he received. Let's look at another one. Ephesians chapter four. You can't walk in what you don't know. You can't receive what you don't know. You can't believe what you don't know. You can't have what you don't know. You can't be what you don't know. So the most important thing is that you gain knowledge coupled with prayer so that the, 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 the knowledge will bring you into a place of believing. But the, the prayer, keep the faith, keep the faith fanned to keep it burning. Hallelujah. Are you there? Ephesians chapter four, verse 17. Ooh, this is good to me. 
This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not, walk not as other Gentiles in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding dark and a being alienated from the life of God, being alienated from the life of God, being separated from the life of God. There's a life that God has, and they're not even separated from, they're not even connected to it. They are separated through what? In other words, the, God can have a life. The life of God that you're supposed to be living could be the thing that God wants you to have, but you'll be separated from it through ignorance. Ignorance will keep you away from the thing that God wants you to be. Ignorance will keep you away from the thing that God wants you to have. Ignorance is an enemy and it must be put to death. How do you kill ignorance? By the acquisition of revealed knowledge from the Holy Ghost. Giving yourself to the teaching of the Holy Ghost puts ignorance to death. My people are destroyed because they don't know how to worship. The lack of knowledge. So it's the, it's the ignorance thing. Not the, not the way you raise your hand. Not the way. It's the ignorance. Not knowing. Brought a destruction. You got that toy? Somebody say I need to know some stuff. I'm going to You mean to tell me that the same Christ that walked the earth dead now lives in you? Yeah. Christ, I'm crucified with him. When he died, I died. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. That if you be risen with Christ, not by him, you've been risen. When he got up, I got up. He qualified me. Then you ought to believe your clothes to be anointed then. You ought to believe it. You ought to believe a force radiating from your being so powerfully that it's greater than any sin. It's greater than any sin. Sickness. It's greater than any devil. It's greater than hate of any enemy. It's greater than death itself. There's a life flowing from you.